Hello, in this video I will show you how to create Blitz reports and how to use parameters. So let's open the Blitz report form here from the Excel icon in the top menu. And we have our bank account balances report here. If we have the Blitz report access profile option set to be a developer, then we see the setup button here. And behind the setup button, we have the definition of the report. So here we have the report name, see bank account balances, then we have an optional description and we have the SQL query of the report. And on a second tab, we have parameter definitions. Parameters are typically the parameter name, an SQL where clause that restricts the parameter and an optional value set or list of values. And then we have on the third tab, we have assignments and the assignments define the security of the report. In this case, we have assignments for the cash management application. That means every user in a responsibility linked to a cash management application would be allowed to run a report. And we also have assignments on forms level for on the reconcile bank statements form. That means we can also run this report from the reconcile bank statements Oracle standard form. And on the third tab, we have categorization of the report. So we can add the report to one or many categories in this report because it is one of the Nginx developed reports. It is in the Nginx category. Okay, so let's create a new report by clicking on this plus sign here. Test. From the payables area, let's just do a simple query. Select star from AP suppliers. Okay. And we can click on the run button and run again. And then we have directly the output of the SQL query. So this is very basic SQL. So let's go back. Typically, you would want to have parameters in the report as well. So let's add parameters. So here on the second tab right now, it is grayed out because we did not define an anchor in the SQL query yet. In order to be able to add parameters, we would need to have an anchor, for example, like this, where one equals one. And then we can reference that anchor here, one equals one. And here we can enter the parameter name and your SQL query. We can also copy existing parameters from other reports. We could, for example, double click on the parameter name field, and then we can search for supplier parameters from other reports. And then we can check, for example, here parameter name is supplier. The where clause is APS vendor name equals vendor name and the list of values AP supplier from the AP invoice payments report. So we can just copy this one and that means we have now a list of value for suppliers so we can run the report like this and what happens now if we provide a value for the parameter the the where clause that we have defined on the parameters tab is inserted directly in the sql query so on the first sheet here you have the data of the report on the second sheet you have the, the audit trail, so you have the report name, database name, run date, and request ID, and so on. And you also see the parameters used and the SQL query. So here, for example, you see the where clause, APS vendor name, is inserted into the SQL query directly before our anchor, one equals one. So we see the SQL query in the on the second tab of the Excel output. We can also see the SQL query in the log file. So if we go to view request, because every Blitz report runs as a background concurrent request. We can also click here on view log, and then we also see the details. So we see, for example, the SQL query, the parameters used, in this case, just one vendor name, and the number of records returned, one. OK, so let's go back to the report definition. Let's make it a little bit more interesting, because this is just AP suppliers. Let's add the AP invoice table as well. And then we need to link the tables and APS and ID equals vendor ID. Okay, and now we only want uh, specific columns. Let's say vendor name and let's say APS segment one would be the vendor. And from the invoice table, we simply take all the columns. So this query might be bigger. So in, for that reason, let's add a parameter also to restrict the invoice data. So here on the second sheet, let's now add the second parameter. Let's say, let's also copy that one. So 
<coughs> an invoice date from invoice date from this one. Yeah, it looks like it's the right one. AIA invoice date bigger equals invoice date from. So this should work. An invoice date to as well. So right now I copy these parameters manually, but we could also uh, enter the complete new parameters. So we could, for example, say if we want a creation date for the invoice, we could write invoice creation date from, and then we need to wear clause AIA date bigger equal now a bind variable name, let's say inf create date from. And the type here should be a date. So we have different types. We have the Oracle standard types, character, date, date, time, that would include the timestamp component, number. And then we have three different list of value types. So we have the Oracle standard list of value that is LOV Oracle. So that refers to Oracle standard value sets. And then we have two uh, Blitz report specific value sets. So let me choose in this case, this is a date. So let's just enter a restriction. Let's say everything created after January 22 and we can click on run. And it now has only the invoices created after January 22. And because we selected asterisk, uh, we selected all the columns from the API invoice table. You see it's a large file with many, many columns, which the users probably don't need. So we should uh, either change the SQL to only include the relevant columns or the users, they can also create templates. So they could, for example, then use the template screen here where they can select only the relevant columns, invoice amounts, let's like this, for example. And we can also move the amounts, well, let's move them to the end, like this. Okay, so then when we run it, it looks a little bit cleaner because we only have less columns. Okay, that's better. And now there's some additional, yeah, let me go back to the definition. There's some additional tricks. So if you would like to prevent the users, for example, to run the report wide open like this, because this could cause a performance issue on our test system, it's, it's fast enough. You see here the status is running, but it's not so much data. It's, uh, it's about 150,000 records, I think. So let's see. Yeah, so my lab is now busy opening the file. So on, on our test environment, it's still feasible to run it wide open because you see it's only about how many records? 146,000 records. But on uh, bigger systems, you would not want to allow the users to run it wide open. So for that, you could either make certain parameters uh, required, but then it's not so flexible anymore because for example, here now you need to provide, a, provide an invoice date range, but sometimes you might want to run it only for a supplier without an invoice date range. And for that, we have a button here, which is called required. And then you can enter a restriction which provides a logical expression which needs to be met in order for the users to run the report. So let me show you what it means. So we can click on this default button and then I show you when I try to run it now, it comes up with the message, please enter at least one parameter. And we could also make it more sophisticated. We could, for example, say we would need to provide at least a date range up to one year. So we could also do calculations here. For example, the invoice date to minus invoice date from must be smaller or equal 365 days. Or alternatively, the user can supply, enter a supplier name. And then it would let the user pass the validation. So we could, for example, create a custom message for the user. Um, please enter a supplier name or date range up to one year like this. And then when we try to run it, we have this custom message. And if we enter a date range, first of Gen 05, for example, then it lets us run the report. So that is the advanced 
required parameter restrictions so that you can control more in detail what parameters the users have to enter when they want to run a report. And then we have some additional features. For example, there is version control. So you saw I changed the SQL a couple of times. And here at the top right corner, you see version number three now. So here on the version number, you can click on the number and then you see the history of the report. And you see then who created the, the SQL and who changed the SQL. Here, for example, I added the, the where clause. And then you could add comments as well. Let's say edit anchor. Edit one equals one anchor. Or you could say here I added the, the invoice table. So you could write an edit invoice data. Okay. Then on the parameter sheet, <clears throat> I only briefly showed the LOV query. So let me explain a little bit more about this list of values. So we have different types. So we have, for example, let's enter supplier number and APS uh, segment one equals supplier number. And now for the supplier number, we would like to have a value set. So let's first choose the Oracle standard one and see what we find. So here we have a list of all the Oracle standard value sets and it's probably called vendor something. Okay, so here on the usage, you see the count and the count shows how often that uh, list of value is used in Blitz reports already. So this one is a popular one, it's used 21 times. Here we have when, a vendor number list of values. So let's choose this one. And you can also click on the list of value query here and then you see the SQL definition of the, re of the value set. And that is also the reason you see it's read only, so we cannot modify it. And because it's an Oracle standard value set, in order to modify the query, we would need to go to the Oracle standard value set screen and modify it there. And the Oracle standard value set screen has also a limitation to 240 characters for the table names. And for that reason, we, invent, we created our own list of values because we did not find the Oracle standard value sets flexible enough for what we want to do. Because let's say, in this case, if you would like to modify it, for example, add a description for the vendor name, because it would be nice not just to have the vendor number, but also to have the vendor name in here, we could change the list of value query. Or before I do that, let me show you how it works. Let's just click on run and select one of these numbers. Oh, I still have the advanced uh, restriction. Let me just take it out so that we can run it without any validation. Okay. So let's choose one of these vendor numbers. Now it's running. And it restricts the data. It doesn't find anything. Why is that? If it doesn't find anything, we can look at the SQL query, for example, in the log file and see what it did. So it has here the restriction and the supplier number is restricted to 10,003. And the reason is that there's simply no invoice for that supplier. So that would be the reason. So we need to pick a supplier which had an invoice. So let's choose one of the suppliers from the previous Excel file. So here we have the invoices and we can also, there's also a feature that the users like a lot. So we can just copy a list of supplier numbers like this. And then we can use the multiple values functionality here by clicking on this Excel, on the checkbox. And then we can open the editor window and paste the values that we have copied from the Excel file. And then we can run it like this. Let me close the Oracle screen here. So now it's running and it will run exactly for these supplier numbers and then show all the invoices. Okay, so now we have the invoice data for all these vendor numbers. You see all these and it's probably also a bigger file. Let's see. Yes, it's 33,000 records, but was still quite quick. So that is the Orca standard value set, but we have as I mentioned, we don't like that the fact that we cannot easily modify the, the query here. And for that reason, we have introduced 
our own list of values, which are LOV custom and LOV. So if we choose LOV custom, we can now modify the query here. We could, for example, add the vendor name, vendor name. And then when we close it and run it, and now we have, you see now it's nicer because we see also the supplier name directly here. So that's how the list of value types work. And if we want to reuse this list of values, so you see now it doesn't have a name because it is used only for this specific report. If we want to use this list of value for different reports or different parameters as well, we can click on the save as shared list of value button. And then we can say, um, test supplier number, it's just a test record. And then you see, we have it here and we can reference it uh, uh, or use it for different parameters as well. Yeah, there's a little bit more to explain around these LOVs and I will probably create a separate video for that. So let me go on and talk a little bit about these assignments. So initially I mentioned that the assignments define the security of the report. Right now, when we run a report, we need to be a developer because there are no assignments. So the reports which don't have any assignments, they are only visible for developers and so the users cannot run them. If you want to make them available for the users, you would need to assign them on different levels. So we have the Orca standard level, which is request group, but also that one is not so flexible because sometimes you would might have a report which you want to give to everyone in a certain application. And for that reason, we have here different levels as well. So if we choose application level, let's say payables, that means that every user in a responsibility, which is linked to the payables application, would be allowed to run a report. And then we have more levels as well. We can also assign reports to individual users, or we could even exclude individual users or individual levels. So, so that all that is, uh, it's, it's possible to control the assignments on a very granular basis. And the most interesting assignment is the forms assignment. So we can link the report to an Oracle standard form, for example, to the invoice workbench in this case. So let's link it to the AP invoice workbench. And that means when we go to payables now and to the invoice workbench, so we are in manufacturing manager, let's go to payables and go to the invoices screen. So we can query invoices first of gen 05, for example. And when we are on a specific invoice, let's say here this one, we can click on this Excel icon and you see now it has, it's no longer just green. It has a yellow star next to it. And the yellow star means that we have specific favorites or specific reports linked to this Oracle screen. In this case, a couple of payables related or invoice related reports and also our new AP test report here at the top. So we can open it directly from here and run it from here. And we can also default parameter values. So for example, if you have a specific invoice open for one of these suppliers, advantage uh, supplier, and you want to default the supplier name into the blitz report field, we can identify the field here. So the field name, the block is INV, some folder field name is vendor side code. I think I'm on the wrong field because I wanted to have the trading partner field, Advantage Corp. Yeah, this is the right one. So let's take the block, INV, some folder. The field is called vendor name. So we can, as a developer, we can complete the setup now for this assignment. So we say, for the invoice workbench assignment, when we come from the Oracle standard invoice workbench screen, we can define the supplier number to be defaulted from the field vendor name like that. And then let's save it and close it. And now when we click on this Excel icon, it opens directly our Blitz report form with, for that supplier. And we can click on run. And then we have a nice export of the invoice history for that supplier only. So that is uh, the forms assignments, which allows assigning reports, basically allows uh, to assign any of the reports to any of the Oracle standard or also custom forms. Yeah, there's a little bit more to explain around the parameter definitions and the list of values because we have different types, for example, also different types of anchors. So I only explained uh, the basic one equals one anchor so far. 
So I will create additional videos explaining how these different anchor types will be used and also how dependencies can be used and also how the different lists of values can be used. Thanks for watching.